Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're going to do the first retaliation mission in East Africa, Operation Drunken Bell it is. Uh, the retaliation missions are usually uh, the time uh, in a campaign when the Chosen show up for the very first time. So I am expecting, fully expecting that that's going to happen, which means we are going to take three rookies uh, with us and Hogbite. Hogbite unfortunately is tired, so that is a bit of a bummer. He will be injured afterwards. But yeah, we can't do it without uh, him, so well, let's try our best and see how well we're going to do. Might as well I could have probably modified one of uh, the normal rifles as well. Doesn't matter now. So, let's see how well we can fight against uh, the Chosen. I expect it's going to be the Assassin and that's a pretty hard encounter to be honest. And look at that, we just landed. So, a couple of things for the first retaliation mission. Uh, number one. It is not as bad to lose this mission as it might seem on paper. The only thing that really happens is you're going to lose a couple of resources. Yes, that sucks, but it's not the end of the world, to be honest. So if things are going to be too tough on us, we're simply going to pull back and call it a day. This starting position is not too bad. Specifically since um, on almost any retaliation mission we are Yeah, basically forced to go in without concealment Which is a major disadvantage. I'll keep the group together Mainly to make sure that we're uh, That we're being able to engage the same uh, team. Hogbite doesn't have too much movement, so for him to really stick with the others means if they are having one blue move and they're triggering a set of aliens, then Hogbite can definitely sprint in and yeah, hit and kill the aliens. The other topic is if we're really fighting against um, a Chosen now, then that requires us to cluster up at least a tiny bit we wouldn't want to cluster up too much but stragglers will be um, caught off guard very very easily so yeah i was right the assassin would be here so let's take a look at her strength and weaknesses strength revenge a uh, chance to return fire against missed shots that's pretty bad for all of the rookies really 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 bad for us and regeneration that's a horrible horrible choice so those are really strong strength. The only thing that could be worse is um, immunity against melee. Shellshocked, on the other hand, is good for us. The explosions will deal three additional damage for uh, for her. Uh, she, I think, starts with 20, 25 hit points, so mm, or even 30. So yeah, we can't burst her down even despite the shell shock and advis uh, adversary Templars means she takes extra damage from the Templar. That in itself is also fantastic. What is not fantastic at all is that she is invisible and her hits very likely will one shot either of the rookies. So what I'm trying to do is I'll keep Hogbite in the front and let him take most of the heat because he has uh, parry. This here would be too drastic of a move. Is this already spotting them out? Yes, it is. Yeah, unfortunately, Hogbite is cannot get in far enough. Oh, that's a problem. I would like to take the high ground here. The main issue is we're being very much exposed and flanked up here, so can't really freely take the high ground. 
it is contested. And with this door not being open, we also cannot really flank him. This here would be a perfect position to actually flank him. Luckily, uh, this is explosive, uh, explosive, so if they would be smart, they could actually hit us and with the explosion kill Hogbite, but luckily the AI doesn't know about that. So that's all good. Let's make sure we're trying to go for a flank whenever possible. True Rebel is moving up here. We can at least overwatch. I'm not going to shoot into full cover, specifically not with these horrible, horrible odds. Can't throw the grenade far enough. But a 50-50 is okay. Didn't work out, so we're moving back because we don't want to be flanked. And like I said, we're just going to overwatch for now. They do have plenty of targets around here. There is a shot. And Overwatch was definitely the right call. He is Overwatching and did he actually kill? No, no way. <laughs> so, um, one of the civilians moved, but it was a faceless one. He shot it and dealt enough damage so that it is now triggered. That is a f hilarious interaction. There will be no escape. All right, so we're we're definitely taking a a bit more serious approach. Let's get rid of uh, the cover here. We're now in level range for the sectored. Confirmed. Moving up with Russ. Let's make sure that we kill the trooper. Didn't work as expected. That's unfortunate. Just double check it. Yeah, that's a 100% kill. Unfortunately, we can't really move up far enough and shoot. There's another way up here. So we got to deal with the situation without the bonus for high ground. And I'm a bit concerned because I know that the Chosen will soon start to move in. Alright, that's a two for one. And we're going to parry. And although we can't shoot, I will still move all the way up here just because it gives us so much more agency next turn. He starts to group up with the faceless one, which is absolutely hilarious.
Faces one in return. It's just moving in. We gotta deal with it next turn. That's a given. Chosen moves in. Luckily, we have Perry ready and uh, can counter her ambush. Let's hope she takes a really poor position. Like something over here. If she runs over half of the map again. Not the worst, not the best position either. Moving over here. Oh wow, can we not just roll it down? Are you kidding me? Apparently we cannot. This here on the other hand would be a nice throw. And it should at least open her up. Question is... Should we start with that or not? Gotta deal with the faceless one, that's a given. True Rebel starts to soften it up. Very nice damage, good job, man. And Eric should be able to kill. No, oh, that's unfortunate. We will use parry. We will need an extra action just to get it down. That is unfortunate. But in the meantime, we can at least make sure that she's not being able to hide again. She regenerates the hit points, that's a bit of a problem. We know there's another pack here. Alright, she's summoned yet another soldier. I didn't see her having the ability of Shogun. Oh wow, Harbor Wave. She moves all the way up here for Harbor Wave. But she continues to stay here. She cannot hop away and then move again. <laughs> Lol. All right. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, this is this is going to be interesting, ladies and gentlemen, because this soon could be a one-shot. So, let's see. This is definitely, if we play it right, if we play it right, that can lead to destruction. Okay, so, first things first. She... Needs to go down. Let us find out. You already know she's shell shocked, so fantastic. This here should not destroy the rooftop. Famous last words. It doesn't, it did not. Oh, hell yeah. There we go. Ooh. 
Fantastic. That was uh, lucky to get her in the right position, but at the same time, it was also <laughs> incredibly dumb of her to uh, to just get here. We do have a problem with a burning rooftop. Uh, it might not look like one, but trust me, we do have a problem with it. True rebel just gets the hell out of there. And we're doing another parry move. This might lead to someone being ignited. No, it does not. We're lucky. But trust me, we gotta get the hell out of here. There's another high ground over here. And we are going to very much move into this direction. Even despite of the disorientation. True Rebel moves in as well. And let's just move over here. Overwatch. And Rust can reload. We don't need another Overwatch. Not for now. There's another pack over here. And that should be the last one. Slow movement. It would seem Advent has begun deploying their so-called priests into combat. Their implants provide significant enhancements to whatever latent psionic energy they may have once. Possessed. Okay. Okay, we can definitely kill one of the troopers. That's fantastic. Good. Let's start with picking up the stragglers. This is a 50-50. Fortunately, it didn't work. Moving into full cover. Another shot, unfortunately another miss. And let's take another 50-50. Okay, that was at least a kill. Wonderful. Good. We're continuing with Hogbite. Autoloader and repeater. Fantastic. Uh, we could either use a repeater, uh, um, either a parry, or we're going for full cover somewhere like this. Not too bad. The priest flank us uh, there. This here could be half cover. This could be full cover with the priest technically being able to flank us, but at the same time exposing themselves. Although they could move to here and be fine. Or we're just negating one shot completely and banking on the fact that the priest will do either a holy warrior or stasis. Yep, stasis, there we go. All right, and that will be a parry. Or not. Maybe it will just be a random kill. Okay. Obvious uh, move here is to flank nicely from high ground. Very solid hit. He's in full cover unless you're coming in from the side, at which point he's only in half cover. The easiest way to do that is to go here. That'll also get us closer to the high ground. 
So 50-50. Nice little bit of damage. Setting him up for a kill. And there's the kill. And that means no more enemies on the map. We only have to deal with one faceless one, which we should have no problem defeating. Hell yeah. That's a fantastic first uh, mm, retaliation mission, specifically since we also got the Chosen down. All right, moving up. That'll give us some extra chance to aim. All right, wait a second. Is that level? No, it's not. We want to give all of the kills uh, to Hogbite if possible. That way he can get a promotion. Yep, there we go. Another kill. And I think that was pretty convincing. I, if I'm not mistaken, I only lost two um, civilians. Yeah. 11 out of 13 rescued. Well, that went better than expected. All right, here we go. We landed. Let's take a look. Can we promote Hogbite? Yes, we can. That is awesome. And he has a lot of AP. That is even better. Okay, cool. Uh, so, extra focus, fantastic. Amplify, fantastic. Let's first of all get the extra focus. That's good. I almost think that we're going for Amplify as well, just because it is a very good ability. Yeah. I'll leave the remaining points as is for now. The Lieutenant rank will have a couple additional goodies for us. Yeah. XQ6, uh, really well done. Russ, really well done. And True Rebel, also really well done. We got 11 rescued civilians. Repeater is great. Uh, Autoloader isn't bad either. And look at that, 33 supplies. That'll go a long way because we need a lot of supplies going forward. Cool, very good. That was an absolutely solid mission. Grenade and ammunition. Hmm. I think we're going to take that over supplies because ammunition is very valuable in the early game. Uh, specifically if you have only rookies. And grenades are normally also pretty valuable. Could be, for instance, an EMP grenade. Or a nice acid grenade. Supply drop in two. You know what? Let's do the supply. I changed my mind. Let's do the supplies first because we can actually work with the supplies and then we're going to get the grenade. Good. First month or first iteration is over. We did a pretty good job overall. Chosen double staff effort and hunt down the commander seeking to capture XCOM soldier at every opportunity. None of those two is bad. Hmm, so two additional power on the Avenger or soldiers are more likely to bleed out. Well, we're taking the Avenger power that's uh, given because it will allow us to maybe go for one more uh, for one more building and we even get the option to do some sort of missions for now I love the faction hero but we can't uh, use him 
Increased combat intelligence is fantastic. Can we put Hogbite in here? No, not yet. Well, that would be just awesome. It's exactly what he needs. Very, very good. We'll need to send one of our vets to lead the effort. Hmm. It seems we can't really do much, right? Not allowed to use him on the missions. The rookies can't yet get, uh, get there. Uh, we theoretically could get the Reaper, but I'm not allowed to take the Reaper. So a rookie could have plus five hacking. Yay. Well, I suppose it's better than nothing. So... Let's use two of our rookies, the DM and Riku. We'll try to locate the faction hero. And we got more supplies, so let's get the supplies here. That means we'll have to fly over and scan the area if we want to recover this stuff for ourselves. Just double checking to see if everything is working well. Resistance ring soon is going to be built. Yeah, we need another engineer, but there's only so much I can do. Commander, you should establish contact with the local resistance network as soon as possible. Oh yeah, that's a smart idea. Resistance communication is soon going to happen. Another important step forward. There we go. In our research. We can now build resistance radios. Perfect. So sectored autopsy would lead us down the psionic rush. And we might start that with only four days. Why not? Psionics is the next one. We're not having enough Elarium, but maybe the game will realize that we will need Elarium. So It's not the worst to already start that and be ready to uh, to research afterwards. Good. Let's get the supply drop first. And look at that. We got the resistance ring. Now we can officially do covert ops missions. That's pretty good. We got enough power to theoretically build something else. We're still going for the laboratory rush, like I mentioned. So that's okay. Could definitely use a second engineer. It's getting a bit cumbersome to go through it with only one. We got enough supplies. And before going for the grenade, although that is also good, I want to probably expand twice so we're making contact we're going to get africa that even allows us to get the continent bonus if we're playing our cards right and that is the avatar progress which is now um, or the avatar project which is now officially starting Nothing to be entirely concerned about, at least not yet. We will just continue. Yeah, look at that. New research available. Psionics. I like the mind shield. It's not a bad it's not a bad option. Psionics, however, require Elarium crystals. We don't have those yet. Plated armor um, require alloys. We don't have that either. We could go for magnetic weapons, which would be the natural next uh, step. Faces ones aren't bad either. Experimental weapons would give us, let's see. The pistol is only really good for a sniper because it's uh, uh, their sidearm, so that's not really useful. 
The axe isn't really useful because we don't have rangers. So it would really only be for the frost grenade, so it's not going to matter too much. I think we're going for magnetic weapons. It's a month, but it will be a good upgrade. And the only reason why I'm not taking plated armor is because I'm missing the alien alloys. But yeah, I would go magnetic weapons even before resistance ring and we can speed it up soon uh, once the laboratory is done. So that's good. In terms of building, once we got the debris out of the way, um, I would probably go for proving grounds next so that we at least can open up for one spark. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we had an Alarium core or two already, so that would be that would be the next step. And that's another supply mission, which isn't bad. Yeah, that's not bad. Cool, good. Uh, the next mission seems relatively straightforward with the sabotage on a transmitter so we should be able to do that if we look at the overall state of the campaign the strategic layer for the first month isn't bad we're at the very end of the first month laboratory is almost completely built which is fantastic uh, we got two scientists one engineer the uh, resistance mission unfortunately didn't spawn another engineer so maybe we will get it as a strategic uh, layer spawn uh, here or there we already got the resistance rings so that is good however I fear that we, already have forces we might over. have a problem with running through the missions just because we do have only rookies and the only one who can do the missions is Hawkbite and we currently need him to yeah pretty much carry the run so eh. That is not fully thought through. Here improving the combat intelligence for Hogbite would be fantastic. So that's one of the missions that I would like to do. And in order to kind of get that um, that relief, we might want to go for proving grounds. Uh, the other option is a GTS and then getting squad, side, uh, squad size upgrade. But I think that that will only marginally solve the problem because even with four rookies, they are still only rookies. So there's not so much uh, we can do with them. Next one will probably be the um, the proving ground facility. And then we got no open coil here. So none of those particularly looks like a great spot for energy but we'll just build energy and then probably afterwards gts and psionics that's the general uh, plan of how we're going to go about it and that brings us to the end of this video uh, video guys if you enjoy the content as always leave a comment down below you know and uh, hit the like button you know that the youtube algorithm likes that and um, that is all i'm asking for a little bit of support for the channel thank you and see you in the next video bye bye